So to make dynamic cloth simulations like these ones, you will need a smart bone module, which sadly got taken off of Roblox, but I've made a video on how to set it up from GitHub. So if you don't have it, then go follow the tutorial. But anyways, as you can see, these cloths are affected by wind and they are also meshes. If I go to select this one, you can see that it's a mesh part and it's a skinned model which has bones. So first you need to make a model in Blender. And it might look a bit different because I'm using a custom theme, but yeah. So anyway, we need to start modeling the cloth now. And you can see which buttons I press so you can follow along because I have the screencast keys add-on. But anyways, let's make the rope and the frame first. So we need to add a cylinder, which has 16 sides. I need to scale it down. Then move this part up. So I need to make a pole like this and then just add a mirror modifier and move it out in edit mode and set the mirror to be on the Y axis. So we have our poles and now let's make the rope. Also, this is the editing pole. I need to know that here I'm making a whole frame for the model, right? Which is made out of three meshes. And importing into studio will cause a root part to appear. And the root part will have the bones instead of the cloth. So if you don't want to have it, you can just set everything up as a single mesh. Import it separately or just export the rigged mesh with the armature by itself. But yeah. And it's as simple as just adding a arc curve. So we set the rotation to be 90 by 90 on X and Z axis. Set the start angle to be 180 and end angle to be 0. And set the Y rotation on minus 180. Then just move it up and scale the radius. You can also add a few more sides and you basically want the point, let's say this one, to be on the pole. So you need to add more radius and just move it higher. Like this. Then you can delete these vertices. Then select the center ones. And also delete these vertices. So now we have a curve like this. Then you go to the curve property window. Go to geometry. And in the bevel, you just want to add depth. And you might see that this curve is not feeling like um, in a full circle, it's doing a half circle instead. So you just need to go to the fill mode and select none. And let's make it a bit smaller. Then what we want to do is apply visual geometry to mesh. So you can press F3 to search for the option. And here it is in object apply and visual geometry to mesh. So right now we have a mesh and I'm just gonna move it a bit lower. And I'm also gonna go ahead and shade smoothly everything. And now for actually making the cloth that we want to move, we need to add a plane. Rotated on Y by 90 degrees. And just scale it to whatever we want. Then we need to add a lot of loop cuts. You don't have to go with this much amount of geometry, but yeah. I'm just doing this for a tutorial and it's not an asset for an actual game. But anyways, if you press on this button right here, this is proportional editing. With it we can just select these two corners and move them out. You can see that we have a circle in the center right there, so we can scroll to make the area bigger. So these two and these two. And I'm gonna have these points as basically pinpoints for the cloth. And that's gonna be for the white paint. And if you are finding this tutorial informative, then please leave a like. It would really support me and my channel. And it keeps me motivated to do these tutorials for you guys. But yeah, back to the video. But we have this set up right now, right? So now for it to look like a cloth, we could do a cloth scene, but I found a better way, which is to go into the sculpting, expanding this and selecting the cloth brush. I'm gonna put this strength to 1 and I'm going to enable Dino Topo and also enable smooth shading. But yeah, now we basically need to make something that resembles a cloth. And using this brush is kind of clunky, but if I press on a point, let's say on this one, and move my mouse, you can see that I am dictating the flow of the cloth, right? So I can just mess around with it and yeah. And also, as you can see, it's not smooth right now, right? But we selected it to be smooth shading. We need to go into the edit mode and just go back. 
and this will make it so it's smooth, but it deselected our dino topo, so you need to enable it again. But yeah, right now we just mess around with the brush. So now we have a piece of cloth that looks like this. We need to go back to the modeling and just do some manual fixing because as you can see the top part isn't really what it was at the beginning. So again just select and move up. Also make sure it's shaded smoothly. I would also need to fix this part right here. You don't want parts like this to overlap too much because it's gonna look weirdly when they are on the wind. But anyways, right now we have to add an armature, because like I said, it's simulating bones. So we go into Shift A and select armature. We have this fierce root bone right here, right? We can ascend the bone in the scene, select it, and change the name to root bone. And now in the edit mode, since we have three points right here, right, we have to duplicate it. And also rotate them 180 degrees so they are pointing downwards. Also move it like so. And for later purposes I'm gonna rename these bones, which just have simpler names, because we have to put them inside of an attribute, inside of Roblox Studio. When we are in the edit mode, right, we want to extrude the bones downwards with the flow. So we have this one right here, right, we want to extrude it down. Also move it a bit. Same with this one. This area seems kind of awkward, so I'm just gonna do it like this. And move it like so. And what do I mean by flow? As you can see, there is there are these bends right here, right? We want to add bones. So they basically just go with the flow of the cloak. Because it's gonna give a better effect. Also, if you are having trouble seeing the bones, we can go into the armature and go to the viewport display and select in front. So now you can just see the bones on top always. So right now we have something like this. Also, I could add one more bone right there. I'm gonna disable in front for now. And now we need to set the cloth or the plane and then the armature and just parent it. So we need to do Ctrl P and parent them with automatic weights. If you set the armature fees and not the cloth, you won't have this option there, but yeah. So as you can see, the plane is inside of the armature. And if you select on the cloth and go into the weight paint mode, you can see that all of these bones inside of the vertex groups have these areas right there, right? And what you want to do is, you don't want these parts on top, basically the pins, to be moving around. So I'm gonna go to the object mode, hide the armature, and now we need to go into the edit mode, and just select the parts that we don't want to move. In this case it's gonna be around this, and we just want to remove these faces from the vertex groups, so we can do so by selecting a group and then clicking on remove. As you can see the action is removed from vertex group. And now if you hover over this area right here, you can move down and up with arrows. So I would just go over every vertex group and press on remove. And if I go back to the paint mode, we don't really want to have red areas on top too. Since this area isn't moving and there is a red area right here, there is gonna be weird effects. 
So what I like to do is select the brush, press right click and set it to like 0.1 and just go over all of this area right here. Then select the smear and smear out these green areas like so. And we need to do that for every vertex group on top. Like this one is so high we don't even need to smear anything out. And yeah, the weight paints look like this. So we go back to the object mode and I unhide the armature. Oh, and I also realize there is still this mirror modifier right here so you can apply it. We can also apply it in the export but yeah. Now to export the mesh and the armature we have to basically just select these two parts. Then select the plane or the cloth and then select the armature last. And now we want to go into file, export and fbx. I will name this one cloth, test, lower the scale to 0.5, right here in the preset we want to save the object, then scroll down. You can apply transforms if you want, but in our case it's not really necessary. In the geometry we want to basically apply the modifiers, like I said, but we don't have any so we can just deselect this one. And in the armature we want to select only deformed bones and don't add leaf bones. And we don't have any animations so we can deselect the bake animations too. And just press on export. And now when we are in the studio, we have to go into the Home tab and select the Import 3D. Navigate to our file. And right here in this view, you can see that there is this button right here, Show Rig Visualization. And it's gonna show us that it has an armature, right? And for some reason, it's not showing every single bone, but there are there and they are deforming the cloth. But yeah, you can also see that you have an armature right here with all of the bones. So I don't need to add it to my inventory and we can choose press on import. And we have the model right here, so I can scale it down and I'm gonna move it next to all of these different models. I'm just gonna add some appearance to it. Also, we don't need the initial poses and we don't need the animation controller because it's not a character. So yeah, I have this rope texture right here. It's an AI generated material. If I go to home and material generator, which you have to enable from the beta features, you would have to go into file beta features and look for material generator in here. It's here roughly in the middle. You would enable it and it would be in the home tab. But yeah, if I type rope texture and generate, it's just going to give a rope texture that you can just press on, select the mesh, and then you would just select something like fabric, save and apply and yeah. And right now to actually set up the smartbone module, and it got moderated off of Roblox, but I've made a tutorial on how to set it up. Is this video right here, you can go and watch it. But yeah, we have to have the smartbone right here in the replicated storage, and the runtime inside of replicated first. So the plane mesh doesn't have the bones, right? The root part has them. So I need to have the root part selected, go to view, tag editor, and add a smartbone tag. Then we need to scroll down to the attributes, Start with an attribute called roots, which is a string, and this roots attribute contains the name of every single bone, so we need to copy them, and we separate them with a comma, like this. We don't add anything in between, it's just name, comma, name, comma, like this, and that's how we add the root bones. And for the object to be affected by the wind, if you go to the smart bone, the dependencies and default settings, wind influence is, default, is defaulted on 1, which might not be enough. And also the wind strength and wind speed are like this and to change them you have to go into the lightning service and change these attributes like this. You can see that I already have wind speed at 20 and wind strength at 5. So I'm gonna select this root part now and add a number attribute called wind influence. And I'm gonna set it to 5 value. Now I'm gonna also anchor this and see if everything works. Wait for everything to load. And as you can see, it's moving by the wind. So we basically have it set up, right? But there are also settings. As you can see, this one is moving way more than the other ones. It's because this one has different settings set up. Same with basically all of them. And oh, and I forgot to also make it double sided. But yeah, we can fix that right now. So you can disable collision on both of these. Then go to the plane. And so it's not transparent like this. We have to make it double sided, which is on top. 
right there. And with that you can see the mesh from both sides. So the settings. If you go to the Smartbones GitHub page, the settings are gonna be right here when you scroll down. There is damping, stiffness and elasticity. These are the three main ones that you want. Inertia isn't really that important because our object doesn't move by its own. Gravity and force is something that we don't need to mess around. Wind influence is something that we set up. Anchor depth is dependent on preferences when it can just give you a different effect that you might want. And all of these are just for optimization. And these are the settings that I use for the lightning service. But yeah, let's mess around with the damping, stiffness and elasticity. So you need to say the root bone, add the damping attribute, which is a number, then a stiffness attribute, which is also a number, and then elasticity, which is also a number. So damping is how slow down the calculation motion of the smart ones will be. And so we can set it to like 0.3 for now. The stiffness is how much of the bone's original C-frame is preserved. So we can try to do maybe 0.6. And elasticity is how much force is applied to return each bone to its original C-frame. So we can try maybe 0.2 for now. So wait for everything to load and yeah, it's looking pretty decent. As you can see, it's moving like it would move on the wind, right? The wind is basically going in this direction, since I have it set it to 0, 0, 0, and I can even rotate stuff to basically just have the effect. But yeah, basically all of these attributes, these settings right here, you have to mess around with them. Same with this one, the wind speed and wind strength, to basically get the effect you want. This one that's moving way more on the wind, has the damping set to 0.1, elasticity to 0.4, and also has some force and gravity applied to them. But I've noticed that the force and gravity is really a minor thing. I was just experimenting with it. Same with inertia, that's how I found that it had no effect because, well, like I said, the object itself isn't moving. And the stiffness is set to 3 and wind influence is set to 10. And this one, for example, damping is 0.5, elasticity is 0.25, and stiffness is 0.6. And yeah, I would just recommend doing some trial and error until you find something that works. As you can see, these settings are pretty decent for something like this. And yeah, and that is basically going to make it for this tutorial then. So if you found it informative, then make sure to subscribe and yeah, hope you had a nice day and see ya guys.